So this is where it all began, bro. For me, at least. <laughs> no, not for me. <laughs> How, how was it for you it's, uh, coming into a man's world at 16? And We're looking back uh, w w with hindsight because we know what happened. Yeah. You know, you, you look, if I look at that period of time in context, it was just me enjoying the newfound freedoms of yeah. life. And, and I left Blackpool, went down to QPR and uh, uh, started playing for England under 21s and, and the world is growing, yeah. opportunities growing. Yeah. But I've got to say that in that, the distance between me and you, uh, mm. me and mum and dad, yeah. uh, and those who were my close relationships as a kid, they just got bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah. With, with that came an inability to express to people that uh, actually, yeah, football's great, mm. but this part of my life is absolutely terrible, or that part of my life is devastating. Mm. And, and not only that, Marv, it wasn't even a thing. Yeah. You know, when, when were we ever taught to talk? No. When were we ever taught to share, no. you know, what's going on and that yeah. it mattered? Never. It never, so... Especially to the outside world, you know, everything was shut down. Definitely. Nobody knows our business. Oh, it's incredible that after my first suicide attempt, mm. 2001, I don't think I told anybody about it other than those who were in the immediate environment. Didn't tell my family. And that there, I know, is the beginning of my depression because of that trauma. Wow, okay. And I, I found that out subsequently. Wow. And that's exactly what I did with, with wow. my depression. Wow. I got the diagnosis in 2010, mm. but didn't pay any mind to it until I put myself in front of a, a lorry in 2014. Mm. Wow. Just one continual depression. Yeah. That's scary. I can vividly remember leading up to it. Um, <laughs> it's one of the hardest things I've ever done. Ever. Do you know what? I I'm going to end this once and for all because I can't stop it coming back. I don't want to be a burden, but I do understand that other people's lives are affected now by my choice. Yeah. So I'm walking around Liverpool looking for a responsible way to die. Obviously things were very different back then, but what would you say mm. to someone in your position mm. now? If you were that guy on the street and you saw someone who was suicidal, what would your approach be? What would you say? Well, we actually get quite a few of them, Mark. Mm. You know, and, and it's awesome that they get in touch. Guys are around our age, yeah. you know, under 50, let's say. Yeah. And, and they, they are feeling a lot of the stuff that we've talked about and done is resonating with him, especially about the upbringing, you know, and what it is to be a man and, and yeah. all of this stuff that's preventing him yeah. from, from sharing what they're, what they're going through. It's imperative that you find someone yeah. and tell someone. Because yeah. like you said, there are people out there who not only can help, but they want to. Yeah. It's been hard, but it's certainly been ben beneficial. I wouldn't have made it without you, bro. <laughs> and it's true. I wouldn't without you. <laughs> I love you, bro.